Good morning and welcome to Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. It's a Tuesday edition of the program. We're glad you're along for the ride. It is a rainy day here in the Gainesville area, rain that we needed uh, very badly. Um, we're going to be joined today on the show by Gator Bait and uh, Buddy Martin from the Buddy Martin Show. And the second half of the show, uh, former Gator and Marshall Thundering Herd quarterback Eric Kresser will join us. Um, first, we're going to go straight to the Titan MR hotline, and we're joined by the one and the only, the good old Buddy Martin. Buddy, how are you, my man? Good morning, Shane. Nice to be on uh, Pot Up with Matthews today. And uh, looking forward to this next few minutes. I have a lot of questions I want to ask you tonight when we do sort of a, uh, what they call a quid pro quo, I guess. You're going to be on the Buddy Martin Show tonight about 9 o'clock. So looking forward to this next few minutes. Uh, no doubt about it. Buddy, before we jump into, you know, college football and Gator stuff, uh, you know, some news and notes around the world of sports. They actually started playing professional baseball yesterday, yesterday. in Taiwan. Um, so that's got to be, you know, pretty good that, you know, Taiwan's playing professional baseball. No fans in the stands. That's got to be a, a pretty good sign for us over here. Right now, guys like us, us sports junkies, we look for anything that's like the first swallow of spring. Give me some kind of news that I can hang my hat on, you know. Because on my show, we've been talking about things like, all right, let's expand the playoff. Let's do it now. Looking at the list of quarterbacks that are being uh, around the SEC and the country as to who's on and who's not, and maybe why, why Kyle Trask isn't getting more pub. But, yeah, anything we can get right now, this indication about this whole thing, is we need hope. We need anything. So, yeah, I'll take baseball in Taiwan. Yeah, no doubt about it. Also, buddy, uh, you know, the news came out over the weekend that the XFL has folded and pretty much shut down for good. You know, you've been around a long time uh, through the USFL, uh, the XFL, the Arena League, the All-American Football League, all these different the alliance that Coach Perry was in. Do you think there will ever be another league, uh, minor league, that, that can make it? Or is it just people need, just need to save their money and quit trying? I'll never say never because I was here when the AFL started. I saw that. I've seen the ball from the Continental League, uh, you know, to, to, the, to all of them. And I like football, and I even like watching it in the spring. And I can be honest with you, I didn't get into the XFL. I tried. It just didn't do anything for me. Now, the other one was the all oh, was the, the Coach Spurrier coach. It was the AAF, what it was, whatever that was called. Uh, I actually enjoyed that because, well, mainly because Steve Spurrier was coaching an Orlando team. But the XFL was doomed, and Vince McMahon was supposedly so careful and had it all charted out. He had good coaches lined up. Bobby Stoops was in for the deal. You had some good players, and they had a TV contract which is something that the Spurrier's conference didn't have. Uh, so, but you know what? Uh, the coronavirus is going to take a lot of victims. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it like this, but maybe the XFL died a natural death. Yeah, speaking of the coronavirus, uh, Carl Anthony Towns, uh, the great Kentucky basketball player that played for the Timberwolves, lost his mom to the virus last night. Uh, you know, our, our hearts and prayers go out to he and his family and all the other ones out there. Uh, buddy, you know, next is it next week or two weeks from now? I lose track of time now that we just, we're stuck at home. But the NFL draft comes around. Uh, man, it's going to be a different draft. There's not going to be Roger Goodell standing up on the uh, podium and, and kids walking across, him holding the jersey, hugging, this, that, and the other. Everybody's going to be sitting in their basement or, or wherever it may be. It's going to be a, a draft that's going to be similar to when Buddy Martin and his boys do their mm. – your fantasy draft over there in Ocala mm -hmm. or sitting yeah. in each other's houses. What, what do you think about the, the way the draft's going to go? You know, uh, again, as you point out, I've been around a while and you talk to players who uh, back in the day who got drafted, they didn't even know they got drafted until they got a call at home. Uh, it was small. I remember back when they didn't have the big ESPN program, uh, when they just did it, you know, got together and drew straws and people would use you know, sports magazines to pick their players out of. And it, it's gotten really 
in some ways, sports on steroids, no, no pun intended, uh, has gotten a little over the top. And this is a good time to look at things like this. I know everybody loves the draft. The draft will be hell. He just won't be hell like it is now when extravaganza for it for nine days for crying out loud. So I think we'll live with it. The draft will be fine. They'll get the players picked uh, and they'll go through. I mean, when you put down all the things the NFL does, Shane, you played it for what, 13 years, whatever it may be. When you start talking about the camps and the workouts and, and then, uh, you know, uh, the prep and all the stuff that goes into it, sometimes I think it's a little over the top. But I think the draft will wind up being about the same. It just won't look the same to us. But again, it's like Taiwan baseball. We'll take it. No doubt about it. We're speaking with Buddy Martin. You can check him out at the Buddy Martin Show on Facebook Live uh, Monday through Thursday around 9 o'clock Eastern time. Also uh, runs the old Gator Bait. Um, used to be the Gator Bait magazine, but now it's all online. But we'll uh, – Buddy – before I uh, we talk Gator football and stuff like that, I want to get to my play of the day, which actually is this this day in sports, which is brought to you by Area Rug Masters. Is your whole family stuck at home and tracking in more than usual? Take your rugs to Area Rug Masters for a BOGO rug cleaning. When you mention the coach chain, call 352-448-5999. And, buddy, you're a big golf fan, I'm sure, as I am, but – on this day in 2019, which was last year, Tiger Woods wins his fifth Masters title by one stroke over Xander Shoffley, Dustin Johnson, and Brooks Kepka. It was his 15th major in his first 11 years. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if you got to see the replay of that, buddy, on Sunday. I did. You know, I did. You, forget, you forget how good that Sunday at the Masters was last year. It was phenomenal. It was, and there were some really good players in there. The quality of the playing field in the end was so good that a lot of different guys could have won. But again, Tiger showed his true grit. I thought it was a wonderful thing to replay that and to have Jim Nance interviewing Tiger. Uh, and I think we missed a couple of things along the way. I know Nance talked a lot about the hugs at the end with his children and the symmetry of back when Earl Woods hug checker after winning his first tournament and it just brought out how great the masters is and how great golf is i love that sport i was blessed to be able to cover it for a lot of years i've been to over 32 masters and i've enjoyed watching those guys at their prime and seeing what they could do that was one for the ages with tigers i really enjoyed that my wife and i watched it and talk about wow that was such an amazing story and what a great story of comeback and triumph and then I thought to myself, golf has so many great things about it. I even watched earlier than that, Nicholas's, uh, you know, uh, 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 par three, last par three, and all the things that went on there. And so, yeah, I watch it. I, I love the Masters. I love it more than ever. I'm so glad we've got it now to hold on to because we need memories. We need traditions. And certainly we need people like Tiger. Yeah, I mean, the thing that stood out to me, not not just how great the golf was for Sunday and and obviously his reaction with his kids and his mom afterwards. But how many folks were there, you know, especially at Amen Corner, all packed in there. And, and now we're sitting here thinking, we don't even know if fans are going to be able to go watch sports again. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just, it yeah. just when you think about it, where it's, it's, it was one year ago, just all those people, you know, where Tiger was hugging his kids, his family and hugging the, the other players, the Brooks Kepkas and, you know, all those guys after he won, it's just like, man, how the world has changed in, in a year. It has, and it can change the other way. Maybe not ever be the same again. 9-11 changed everything. Never will be the same after 9-11. The American spirit is amazing and has always been. And as I said, being old has its advantages. I've been through a lot of things in my lifetime. Um, and I know this is one of the most horrible. This is different. This is not as easy to overcome, obviously, as other things. Even world wars, you know, in some respects, are easier to get behind you at some point. So we'll see. But somehow the American ingenuity, uh, that's why I think there'll be a football season. I think unless the virus decides where you aren't, because that's what they say, we won't decide. The virus will decide. There's so much we have to learn. If we can just take it piecemeal, let's just get through today right now. 
And we don't know what's going to happen. There's no way to know. I like to say there's something in algebra called an X. I never understood it. But I know X is the spot in the time that we will resume some kind of sports. It will happen. It will never be the same. Let's put it like this. There's a lot of things different. A lot of them are bad. There could be some good things to come out of this. And among them, in my opinion, is that we got to take another look at college football. Now's the time to reconsider a lot of things, not the least of which is getting better games on TV, having this uh, expanding this playoff, uh, doing the things that we would do without the coronavirus. And uh, I've been discussing this a lot lately about how to change things and how to change things for the better. Uh, you know, you don't have to necessarily change for the worse. So we don't know what's going to happen. We only have today, but we also have our passion and our dreams. And if you study history, and I'm not a historian, but I know this much, after the Spanish flu in 1917, 18, uh, and then that killed, you know, lots and lots of people. I think about 700,000 people in this, in this uh, part of the world. And, and they came back from it. And they had an amazing rebound. In fact, it rebounds so quickly and so fast that they had they, they really sort of the economy went through the roof, uh, and they wound up with, uh, with lots of things happening. The Roaring Twenties came along, you know, and, and America had this pent up demand to party, to be together, whatever. Will this happen? I don't know, but I think there's some good things that could happen out of this. Now is the time for it to happen. College football needs to take this pause and look at it and say, let's come out and be ready to make these changes. We all know, all the surveys have said, I know I saw a poll the other day, 88 athletic directors agree that this needs to be changed. The playoff plan they have right now is just not good enough. And not only that, Shane, how better to raise the money you need than to add more playoff games and more teams, maybe cut the regular season now. So there's one thing you can do differently. But, yeah, it'll never be the same, and let's just hope some of the great traditions carry on and that the game can be made better. We're speaking with Buddy Martin on the Titan MR Hotline from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. So, Buddy, you, you talk about some changes that you would like to see in college football, and I think you basically were talking about the playoff scenario. What would Buddy Martin like to see? You know, this is something I've been talking about since 1990, believe it or not. I actually wrote a column back in 1990 about how this whole thing is going to change. It's going to become a super conference because let's be honest, what drives everything now, certainly the ticket base in college football is stronger than most of the lobbyist road that comes from season tickets or whatever. But what, what drives the thing is the great games on TV. We have too many. We have too many uh, cream puff games right now. Every schedule needs to be tightened down. We need to play a ten, a nine game schedule, maybe uh, with, a, with a conference championship. Maybe realign those conferences. Come out with the top 80, 85 teams, and then put together a scenario where you have conference championships or whatever, and plus your, your five, group of five, etc. I don't know if you the number is eight what it may be, but you take those teams, you play for the conference, and then you begin to play it down. Let's say you have, let's say you can come up with eight conferences. So you have championship games in those, and then you have an 18 playoff out of that. And those games are added. So you can add two or three more weekends to the playoffs. Uh, those, the revenue of those games would be phenomenal. Plus when people buy season tickets, they'll know they're getting their value. They're not getting a directional school or two or three. If you just got to play the teams in your conference plus one intersectional game and then the conference championship and then the playoffs, I mean, you could put 12 teams in, 16 teams in. I don't know the number. I just know college football has needed a makeover for a long time, and now's the time they should do it. Adams Ribs Company, best ribs in Gainesville, hands down, locally owned in two convenient locations, Northwest 13th Street and Southwest 13th Street, open for takeout and delivery. Learn more at adamsribco.com or call them 352-373-8882. Hey, buddy, we got a um, Facebook live comment slash question for you right here, which is brought to you by Pound Heart, your preferred business interruption attorneys. Gary says, ask buddy, when is he going to write a book about himself? That would be very interesting. 
Well, we sell about five copies. My family was buying. That. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to write about people. I, I have actually toyed with the idea of doing a little uh, autobiographical story of my life in sports because I've been blessed to meet a lot of people and see a lot of things. I don't know how interesting it would be, but at least I'd be able to have something my family would be able to remember me by. But I've had an unbelievable experience to meet the people and be and get to know the people that I've known in sports. And I love that. I love sports so much, although I've worked outside of sports a little bit too. Uh, but thank you, whoever said that. My wife's constantly telling me, you need to write this book about all the things you've done, the time you did this, I, did. I keep saying you know what, Let, let's get the other book written first, <laughs> and then we'll see about that. And by the way, I'm very, very excited now about a project I'm, I'm going to be working on, hopefully, about winning. I got a book about winning, and some people who won and how they did it, and if I can get this thing launched by next year, you'll be hearing about it more. But thank you for that person who asked. I think the autobiographic uh, sketch of Buddy Martin will be on hold, but one day, who knows when it's uh, time, maybe we'll put something out there. But I've always wanted to ask you this because you, you've covered sports for so long. Has Was there ever one athlete that was just a a-hole to you and you just, you're like, look, I'm never going to write anything about him again? One. <laughs> there were yeah, a lot of them. But you, <laughs> you, you can't really use your so-called power of the press, although that's a, anymore who's got power. Nobody. If you start using misusing that for your personal grudges, you lose your readers. Your credibility will go down. But I've been you know, listen. I've been uh, I've had I've been used by some of the best <laughs> uh, in time, and sometimes it was my fault the way I approached something. I mean, yeah, I mean, I had a I had a run in run in this run with a Ben Crenshaw of all people. Everybody loves Ben Crenshaw. He got so mad about something I wrote when I lived in New York that he came to the press room clutching the newspaper saying. Where is this guy, Buddy Martin? Where is he? And of course, my friends are kind enough to say, "Oh, he's right over there." You know, <laughs> so he came over there. He had spoke about his ears about something I had written. You know, and and I and he said to me, he says, uh, "I made a comment that it was nice to have Ben Crenshaw in the tournament, but was he was no Jack Nicholas and the New York market needed to have the Nichols and all the other players of his ilk." And and so Ben got so mad and with the smoke coming out of his ears. He finally backed off and looked at me to say, well, I may not be Jack Nichols, but sure, sure as hell, no Herbert Warren Wynn either. <laughs> <laughs> Herbert Warren Wynn was a famous yeah. golf writer. So, yeah. yeah, I've had my time. I've had a few that, uh, you know, that got mad at me and probably some of them were justified. So, buddy, let everyone know what, what's going on over at Gator Bait these days. Well, you know, we're, we're publishing our magazine. I think I got a subscription today. Thank you. Uh, if you're interested in being a part of, we're publishing a magazine every week. Uh, we've got a series of going on, uh, which which I'm going to talk to you about tonight, some uh, about uh, uh, the history of Florida football by decades. And we're just finishing up the last 10 years now with our writers. Um, and uh, we're going to be having a pieces tonight, uh, this week on the era from uh, right now from Dan Mullen uh, all the way back to Urban which is that nine year period that I call it the decade of the M's. All the coaches had M's uh, to start their names. Obviously, much uh, McElwain Meyer and now Mullen. And that wraps up now. And uh, and we're going to uh, continue with that out throughout the summer, all the way back to probably back to when Coach Spurrier played in before. And we're going to try to do some homework on history. Shane, you've been through a lot of history. You What you did and your teams did set the groundwork for these championships that were won. And yeah, there's a lot of untold stories about that. And we'll be coming to you. Uh, and things that get told differently. And people forget things. And they mix up things. We're trying with our reporters, Cassidy Hill, Franz Beard, myself, and Ainsley Lee, doing these pieces every week uh, during the season. And then uh, we're going to uh, we're gonna try to, we're going to take some time on how to have a better gator bait. We do, of course, the show every night, Monday through Thursday, uh, on the Bay TV network, which by the way, you'll be on tonight. Uh, all you got to do is go to the, the Buddy Martin show on Facebook and you'll see, you'll hear. I got to get Shane used to getting on. Uh, we don't do Zoom, but we're doing uh, some other things on our ECAM network where we can actually see Shane. And we're going to talk about <clears throat> tonight 
uh, this whole list of quarterbacks, Shane, I keep saying them. Last night I had Laura Rutledge on, and we talked about this and the ones that what quarterbacks deserve to be talked about and noticed. And we use the usual suspects, but once again, Kyle Trask is buried with names <clears throat> like Kellen Mond, <clears throat> Mag Jones, et cetera. Felipe Franks in Arkansas now, <clears throat> even Miles Brennan and guys like that. And so we're going to see, we're going to talk about the cream of the crop, but I want you tonight on the show, <clears throat> give me your top five of the guys that you're voting for the preseason all SEC team at quarterback. Who are the five you put down? All right. Well, I'll do my homework during the day. Last thing before we let you go, buddy, and I look forward to joining you tonight on your show. Uh, yesterday it came out that uh, I'm not sure of all the inductees to the UF Hall of Fame and the other sports, mm-hmm. but football-wise, yeah. Tebow, Brandon Spikes, and Brandon James. Just quick, quickly your thoughts on those three guys going into the Hall of Fame. Well, they certainly were terrific. I mean, um, <clears throat> I mean uh, that was that 2018. That was an unbelievable team. Urban likes to talk about being one of the great college teams of all time, and those guys were key. Uh, I would personally, uh, I would, I, I, I mean, Tebow and uh, certainly you have questions goes down there, uh, and um, I, I don't know, I don't know about Brandon James. He was a great player, but is he in that ilk of those other guys? Is he one of those? Is he one of the all-time greats at Florida? I don't know. I mentioned it on my show last night. Uh, and a lot of people said, no, he was great. He deserved to be there. He was a tremendous return guy and a good player and made big plays. Well, when you talk about legendary players, no offense. I don't mean to be throwing off on him, but would you put him in your all-time great players of Florida? I'd have to think about that one. The other two, yes, I definitely think they belong. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. But, buddy, uh, we appreciate you joining the show on this rainy Tuesday. And uh, once again, let everybody know where they can check out the Buddy Martin Show and how they can order their Gator Bait. Yeah, thank you for letting me do that. I appreciate that. Gator Bait, go on GatorBaitMedia.com uh, and, and click on uh, uh, the subscribe button and, you, and you'll and you find out how you can subscribe if you want to. we we'll give you the price range and everything from monthly to annual. There's some deals going on right now for annual. And pick out your plan. And uh, we're going to be the number one source for Gator uh, sports, especially football, coming up with a team of players and the, the team of writers we got. And then, of course, Monday through Friday, if you go to Facebook tonight, uh, Facebook, and, and you go to the Buddy Martin Show, uh, click on it, and we stream it there. And, and Shane will be on tonight. We're gathering us with his great stories of the day and also getting his picks as the preseason All-SEC quarterbacks. Well, Buddy, we appreciate you doing the show. Uh, I look forward to tonight. Be safe today, my man. Thank you, and I really enjoyed your show, and I really enjoyed what you're doing with it and hearing from the players and stuff. That's good stuff. I appreciate it, buddy. We'll talk to you tonight. Thank you. That's the great Buddy Martin. You can check him out at the Buddy Martin Show. At Center State Bank, we put business first. We are the largest community bank in the state of Florida. Center State has five convenient Alachua County locations to serve you better. Come in and experience the Center State difference. To learn more, visit centerstatebank.com, Center State Bank, member FDIC. We're going to take our first time out of the program. When we come back, we'll be joined by former Gator and Marshall quarterback, Eric Kresser. We want to take this moment to thank all our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Let's give them something to cheer for now. Our gridiron sponsors are Crime Prevention Security, small enough to serve you, large enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Peachland Dentistry, Gator Nation's number one choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte and surrounding areas. Area Rug Masters, your number one choice for rug cleaning. And Pound Her, preferred personal injury attorneys. Our touchdown sponsors are Gator BTW, Campus USA Credit Union, Celebration Point Town Center, Tropical Smoothie Cafe, The Keys Grill and Piano Bar, UF Mover Guys, The Digital Mortgage Guy, Adams Ribs, Cloud Nine Spa, Colstone Creamery, Gator Domino's, Celebrate Primary Care, Center State Bank, 
If you are interested in promoting your business on the show, you can visit our website, potupwithshane.com, and click on the Advertise button or call Freddie Weeby at 352-284-3733. Again, thank you for all the great businesses that support the show. Please remember, if you like what we are doing here, thank our sponsors and support the businesses that support us. He's looking, no looking. He's going for the end zone. He's got a touchdown! Taylor. Hello. Welcome back to Pot Up with Matt Hughes in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Celebration Point is where the Gators come to celebrate with premium brands like Bass Pro Shop, Tommy Hilfiger, Hotel Indigo, Nike Medici's Regal Cinemas, and coming soon, HBC's new restaurant, Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. We will see you at Celebration Point where the Gators come to celebrate. We want to thank Buddy Martin for joining the show. We're going to go now to the Titan MRI hotline, and we're joined by former Gator quarterback and Marshall thundering herd quarterback eric kresser eric how are you buddy from you kresser, good to hear from you shane yeah good i am can you hear me yeah i can hear you bud um so so you're down in the palm beach gardens west palm area um what's going on how, how you staying busy down there through all this my man yeah i'm in the same boat as everybody else just staying home and and uh getting a lot of computer work done and working around the house um uh, not much else to do really i work for a high school so you know, obviously we're not allowed on campus and um yeah just trying to find stuff to do yeah eric crester joins us on the titan MR hotline eric's the head football coach at the benjamin school uh let everybody know, you know, how you got the job, the head coaching job. I know you were an assistant there for a while. And uh, how are you enjoying being the head ball coach? Uh, it's been great so far. The Benjamin School is awesome. You know, the people I work with are awesome. And uh, it's actually – it goes way, way back to when I was in high school. I actually went to the Benjamin School for a couple of years. And, and when I moved home after playing ball uh, – the same head coach was still there. He was there for 44 years. And, and uh, you know, I started training some quarterbacks in the area, and a few of them were Benjamin players. And before you know it, uh, they had an opening for, for an OC, and and uh, I took that job. And then, he, you know, Coach Reem retired after 44 years, and, and I got the head coaching job, and it's been, it's been awesome. Chris, are you bird watching down there? I'm outside, man. It's nice down here. I heard you say it was raining. Yeah, it's I heard you say it was raining up there, but yeah, it's sunny out, and I'm walking around. It's it's pretty nice. Awesome. Well, uh, talk a little bit. Of, you you obviously have a Gator that that played for you. Tyre Elon played at your school. Also, uh, you have a Florida State quarterback, Jordan Travis, who initially went to Louisville. Talk a little bit about both those kids. Uh, how they performed for you? Oh, they were they were outstanding. Um, you know, the, the, they were the guys when you when you watch them play in high school. You you just knew that they were going to be uh, big time players and end up at a place like Florida, Florida State. Uh, Kair was a four year player for us. You know his his father was an NFL DB for a while, and and so was his uncle Matt Elam, who was a Gator. And uh, Kair was he was awesome. He was. Uh, football, basketball, track star, uh, played both ways, return kicks, 
probably could do all that stuff in college if he really wanted to. Um, but he kind of followed in the footsteps of his dad and his uncle and, and he's playing DB and, and obviously doing a great job. I was, I was there in the orange bowl, got to see him get that interception to secure the game. And it was, it was pretty cool, but, uh, Kyrie a great kid. Um, always had good grades. You know, he was getting recruited by Stanford and Ivy leagues and, and places like that. And, and just an all-around kid, he's probably going to go a long ways with football. Yeah, I agree uh, with Jordan that. Jordan Travis, yeah, Jordan Travis. He's a he's a kid that I was training down here. Uh, he was my quarterback at Benjamin, and um, taught him how to play quarterback. And he was an all-state kid for us. He was Florida Player of the Year in three A, and um, in, initially went to Louisville. And you know that whole thing went down there with Petrino and. A lot of kids left and transferred, and and um, some of the coaches that were at Florida State had recruited him heavily, and and when he was in high school, and so that's how he ended up at Florida State. And um, looks like he's got a good chance to compete for the starting job this year. And you know, I hope he wins it. If he if he does, you know, he'll have a chance to be a three year starter at Florida State, and and uh, yeah, it should be pretty cool to watch him. I was actually on the way to the. Florida, Florida State game last year didn't get a chance to get there, um, but it's going to be pretty, pretty cool getting to watch those two actually go against each other on the field at the same time. No doubt about it. <clears throat> We're speaking with Eric Cresser. Cresser, when you, uh, you know, coming out of high school, uh, what coach at the University of Florida was the main guy that recruited you, and what other schools did you think about going to? Well, I was initially recruited by Charlie Strong. He was the guy that recruited Palm Beach County, and he was the uh, the contact with you know my high school head coach. Uh, but you know, being a quarterback like you, Shane, you know Spurrier was heavily involved in the recruitment, and uh, so I spoke with those guys on a regular basis coming out of high school. And to be honest with you, I grew up a, a Hurricane fan. My brother played for the Miami Hurricanes, and I really liked Jimmy Johnson. Um, right, right when I got to about midway through high school, uh, Jimmy left Miami, Dennis Erickson came in and, um, and then Spurrier took the job at Florida. And that, that's kind of what, you know, swayed me the other way. And, and once Spurrier took the job at Florida and, and, um, you know, I saw what you guys were doing up there, I was, I was sold. So to be honest with you, man, I knew I was going to Florida, you know, halfway through high school. And uh, I didn't take any of my other visits. I only took one visit to Florida. I was already committed, and uh, I was a Gator all the way. We're speaking with Eric Cresser. Cresser, you come in with Danny, and, and obviously everyone knows the the player Danny came uh, became. Was it difficult? And what y'all's relation? What was y'all's relationship like when y'all came in as freshmen? Um, you know, it, y'all were both redshirted. Um, you know, did. I guess my question, I was a senior when you you guys came in yeah. and, uh, you know, y'all got to see how Coach Spurrier handled his quarterbacks, you know, on the sidelines, things of that nature. But what was y'all's relationship yeah. like, your, yours and Danny's? We got along fine. We got along fine. Um, you know, we were always friends and it was a competitive friendship. Uh, we didn't hang out off the field. You know, his, his you know, lifestyle outside the locker room probably a little bit different in mine but um you know we were friendly and we got along and I cut his hair in the dorm room and you know we we hung out a little bit here and there <laughs> but it was uh, yeah I cut I cut a lot of guys hair in the dorm room one of those deals but um yeah it was it was cool I think the whole team got along pretty well Shane I think that's one of the reasons you know our class in 1996 ended up winning the whole deal and one of the reasons in the early 90s they were so good I think everybody got along it was a true team atmosphere and and um just good team chemistry talk about uh in 1995 coach for probably your your favorite moment i would think as a gator was when you set the the single uh game passing yard record you threw for 458 yards against northern illinois and six touchdowns talk about you know coach for coming up to you and say hey man we're going to start you uh, against northern illinois was it a surprise yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was. It was kind of awkward, you know. I, Danny played well, obviously. You know, had all kinds of records and won the Heisman Trophy. But, you know, I always, in the back of my mind, always thought I should have been on the field as well. Uh, so, 
you know, I was sitting there and, and uh, he told me I was going to start. And, you know, it was it was a bittersweet feeling, if you can imagine, you know, if you feel like you should be playing and, and uh, you know, the coach tells you he's going to start you one game. It's like, OK, well, better make, make the most of it. But uh, really, I wanted to be out there every week, you know, but, you know, obviously that game was a big game for me. Um, you know, I got to got to play the whole game. It, it was a good feeling. It was a good day. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a stat wise. It was a big moment. Uh, honestly, the, the big games, even though I didn't play in some of them, those were the biggest moments. You know, the Tennessee games, the Florida State games, those kind of games. Those were always the ones that, you know, your heart still got you know, pumping a lot faster, even if you weren't playing just by being out there. But, but yeah, that game was, that was, that was a pretty fun day. We're speaking with Eric Cresser on the Titan Airmore hotline from the crime prevention security system studios. Uh, probably the best pure passer, I would say that coach Spurrier had in his tenure here. And Eric, uh, for your senior year, you decide you're going to transfer so you can get on the field and play. Uh, Bob Pruitt, who had been a defensive coordinator at Florida was now the head coach at Marshall. Uh, were there any other schools that you were interested in tra- transferring to, or was Marshall the school you wanted to go play at? No, that was it. I um, I really wasn't thinking about transferring. Uh, didn't really, you know, want to transfer. I felt like, you know, in the back of my mind, I still felt like I was going to get a chance to play or at least compete. And uh, I, I did play quite a bit, you know, my junior year and, and even my sophomore year at Florida. Did, I wasn't the starter, but I played quite a bit and felt like I would have played a little bit more my senior year, you know, if not, you know, compete for the job. Um, I know that would have been tough, you know, seeing how Danny played before. But uh, really what happened was Bob Pruitt, you know, that summer going into my senior year, he he became the head coach at Marshall. and. Um, you know, I had I had uh, kind of followed his path and uh, saw what he was doing up there and did a little research on, on Marshall. And, you know, it just seemed like a good fit. And, um, you know, I took a visit up there and he's like, hey, we got this kid, Randy Moss, coming from Florida State, you know, and, you know, with you guys, you know, we just played the national championship game last year. And we think with, if we had you guys, we'll, you know, take it all the way. And, and uh you know, so it was a good fit. Got up to Marshall. I loved it. You know, I loved my teammates up there. It was, it felt just like Florida, to be honest with you. It was great team chemistry. Uh, same type of small college town as Gainesville. Uh, a lot of similarities and uh, really felt at home in Huntington. I loved it up there. And uh, shoot, my son's name is Marshall. I well, that's what I was going to say. Marshall. You loved it enough to name your kid after the school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was awesome, man. It was awesome. It was, and I, you know, I use my experience a lot with the, the kids that I coach in high school. You know, a lot of these kids, you know what I'm talking about, Shane. They all want to play at, you know, a power five conference school. It's it's like power five or bust. And I try to tell these guys, man, division one, one double A, guys, it's good football. You don't have to be at Alabama or LSU to go play good football. And, you know, that's one thing I realized when I got to Huntington, we were still one double A. and most of the kids on our starting team were ended up in the pros for, for a while. I mean, it was, we probably could have played with anybody in the country at any level that year. And, and um, so that's just, it, it was a great experience for me. And, and I still use it to this day with the younger kids. We got a text here on the Titan Mar text line from Joe. He wants to know how was it to play along with Randy Moss? Um, I'll tell you, it was, it was pretty easy. He made my, he made me look, he made me look good. He was even, even as a freshman up there, a red shirt freshman, he was about six, five and ran about a four, three, you know, four, three flat. So, you know, you, you put that thing out there as far as you can throw it, you know, on a go route, you know, on a slant route, you have a, a big diameter to, to fit it into. Uh, you know, his reach is so big and, and he just knows how to position himself like a basketball player. So he, he made my life a lot easier, but, you know, it was, a, it was definitely a team effort. You know, we were 15 and no national champions, but what a lot of people don't realize is we had two 1000 yard rushers and we had another receiver had the, had the same amount of catches as Randy. So it was uh Randy got a lot of the hype because when, 
took it away from him and, and ran for a touchdown. That's where that saying came from. But, but yeah, he did that all the time. And, and so it was, he was a lot of fun to watch, but, but there were a lot of guys on that, you know, a lot of, a lot of our linemen were, were uh, NFL guys. And we just, we just had a, a boatload of players on that team. We're speaking with Eric Cresser, former Gator and Marshall Thundering, her quarterback, also head coach now at the Benjamin School down in South Florida. Um, talk to us a little bit about, did you have a sit-down conversation with the head ball coach when you were thinking about transferring? I did. I talked to him, and, you know, he understood. You know, he um, – I, I felt like he wanted to play me. You know, I, I felt like that's why he started me in the Northern Illinois game, and. I think he was going to do a little bit more the next year, you know, had Danny still been the starter. And, um, but he understood, you know, he, he, he sat down and he told me, he said that he thought I was going to play for a long time after college and, and, uh, you know, that he would support me and, and all those kind of things. So, you know, we had a good talk and, and it was kind of sad to, to leave, you know, but like I said, it's, you know, playing the quarterback position sometimes, you just got to make that move. And, um, you know, sometimes it's just one guy that gets a chance, and, and that's what the case was there. So, Eric, would you say you – you? I mean, you probably stay in touch with both schools, a lot of the teammates, but would you say you are you probably stay in contact more with, with your guys you came in with at Florida? I would say probably equal. I made some very good, you know, friends, and I had some good relationships up in Huntington. Um but, you know, spent more time in Gainesville, you know, and came in with those guys. Um, but I do, I keep in touch with, with a lot of guys from both teams. Um, you know, I'm, I'm like one of those, I feel like I need one of those license plates, house divided, you know, I feel like I need one for myself, <laughs> you know, divided Florida, Florida and Marshall. I mean, I, I, I love, I love both schools. I had, you know, great, great times and memories at both schools. And, and uh, yeah, it's, I can't really say one is is bigger than the other, to be honest with you. Well, what, what's what's interesting is in in that ninety ninety six. Oh, excuse me, that ninety two. Y'all came in in ninety two, right? Uh, your 92, class. Yep. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Coach Spurrier had two national championship quarterbacks on that roster, <laughs> uh, which which is pretty dang cool. Um, talk a little bit about you know we we lived in Yon Hall growing up and uh, at school, not growing up, but you, you talked about how. Right. You, you cut everybody's hair, but you also got – everyone knows James Bates and his paintings. Uh, you got yeah, him yeah. interested in painting, right? Yes, but, the, you know, I want to make it clear. He's always been an artist. I mean, he was doing his artwork in Yon Hall. He's always been doing – he's always had a sketchbook. He always was good at art. I basically introduced him to a paintbrush and, and a canvas. Uh, and helped him out a little bit there, but he's always been an artist. So, I mean, I wish I could take the credit for him, you know, and what he's doing, but, but that's, you know, that's all Bates. He's, he's a creative guy and, you know, he, he, uh, he just, he's just fun to watch whether it's, you know, making prank calls in Yon Hall or doing, you know, <laughs> playing football or doing his artwork or whatever. He, uh, he's definitely an entertainer and good friend. He was one, he was my roommate in Yon Hall. And uh, we came in together and, and, uh, but yeah, he's, he's got it going on. I see his artwork all over the place now and it's pretty cool stuff. A lot of it has to do with Florida football. Yeah. After you left Marshall, you went and uh, had a couple of years with Cincinnati Bengals also played in the Canadian league. Talk a little bit about what, you, you know, what you learned in the NFL and how you take what you've learned there and you imply it with your kids in, at your high school and I guess my other question is, which coach do you try to emulate? Do you, do you take a lot of the stuff that you learn from Coach Spurrier and teach your quarterbacks? I'll tell you, there's there's really a lot of coaches that I uh, I use information from. And obviously Spurrier was, you know, my first college coach. And, and he taught me a lot. You know, I mean, I loved watching film. I, I didn't know how to watch film when I got to Florida. You know, I didn't I – didn't, I didn't when I turned on the film or we talked about past concepts I, it was all foreign to me I mean when I was in high school we, we had I had a very good coach who was a quarterback but our offense was very different than a typical west coast offense or something you'd see in college and so when I got to Florida I had to I had to learn from scratch and um, the, the one thing I can say Spurrier 
taught very well to me anyway was was how to see the spacing on the field, you know, how to look at the shell of the defense and how to know where the weak spots were and, and, and how to get to those plays. I thought, I thought that was pretty cool. And, and the one thing I use from Coach Spurrier now is um, the, the one philosophy I, I have is, you know, you always have to get to a good play. You can't leave a bad play on. And if they're giving us something better, we got to take it if, if the situation allows us to. So that's that's something we're very aggressive. Um, I like I like using audibles. Uh, we we get to, you know, we change it. Sometimes our assistant coaches get mad. We change out of run plays into fast plays all the time. But you know, when I see when I see a uh, something I think could be a touchdown, we take a shot. So that that's probably the the most that I use from Coach Breyer is that attitude and that kind of philosophy of getting to a good play and kind of going for the jugular at all times. That's that's kind of what I think he instilled in me. Um, when I got to Marshall, we had an OC who was very good, uh, Larry Keck. He um, he was a little bit more disciplined in the uh, protections and those kind of things. It was the first time I learned how to how to throw a hot route. You know, we didn't have mm-hmm. hot routes at Florida. Not that not that I can remember. Uh, nope. <laughs> unless I miss, unless I missed it. But nope. uh, when I got I to Marshall, learned, I learned how to. Yeah. I had learned same about thing, right? When you got to Chicago. NFL. Yep. Yeah. So so the, the best part about going to Marshall for me offensively was learning those kind of protections where you know if a certain linebacker comes, you got to throw a hot, and and that that was we got a lot of touchdowns off of those and made a lot of teams pay when they blitzed. And, um, you know, nowadays it's probably impossible to, to do it the way we did it in Florida because the, the defense is disguised so much. And, you know, how can you get up there and know if they're blitzing or not and know that you have to change the protection. So sometimes you just got to read it on the fly and throw the hot routes on the fly. But that was, that was one thing that, that we did at Marshall that I did for the first time that I, you know, I still use now. And, and we do that at, at school here. Um, one of the biggest influences was Kenny Anderson. He was my QB coach at, at Cincinnati, and he was an all-pro QB for Cincinnati, set records for pass completion percentage. And, um, the, you know, the biggest thing that I've learned from him was footwork. You know, the timing of everything and taking extra hitches is bad and, and just knowing your rhythm and your, and your drop and all those kind of things. And um, you know, where the eye placement was big. And, uh, you know, with the West Coast offense, ball's got to come out on time. And uh, I learned that in Cincinnati. And, uh, you know, we, we drill that to death down here at Benjamin. You know, footwork is always good. We're always on time. Ball's always coming out on time. And, uh, but, yeah, I'd say those three guys are, are probably the biggest influences. And I do think about what they taught me, and I do use it often at the Benjamin School. So it's. Uh, I feel like the combination of those three guys really helped me as a quarterback. Last thing for you, Eric, and we really do appreciate you joining the show today. Um, yeah, man. We, we everybody, all former players that played for the HBC. I gotta ask them uh, why are they on the show. I gotta have a good Spurrier story, <laughs> and I know you got a bunch of them. So what? What? Pick one that you could say on air here for our listeners. On air, yeah, I don't know. I got to think about that one. Um, <laughs> some of, some of, some of them, uh, yeah, I can't say on air. Um, there's some good ones though, but uh, gosh, there's one I don't know if I should say. It's kind of, kind of rough. Um, shoot, um, yeah, I can't say that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you got me on this one, man. Um, yeah, my bad. I should have probably yeah. uh, prepared you for that. Well, the one 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 that comes to mind is because James Bates always reminds me of it, and uh, it, it was pretty funny. I, it probably won't be as funny coming from me as it does James, but you know, we were sitting there. James and I was in the front of the the meeting room, and we were getting ready for a bowl game. I, I think it was a Sugar Bowl, maybe. And uh, coach was trying to come up with a little bit of a a little bit of a uh, motivational tactic for us. And and he had this little radio, this little cassette player radio, and he turned this this song on. It was a country song. And and, uh, 
it was the one song that says you got to kick a little and then it and then it says the word ass and uh and the word got bleeped out and everybody was just kind of looking around like are we supposed to like get up and jump up and down now or what are we supposed to do and, <laughs> and but but you could tell when coach was listening to it, you could tell his blood was flowing and he was getting pumped up but it just did i don't think it worked for the guys but you know i think the guys did a pretty good job of faking it but uh yeah. I, I don't know if you know the name of that song but but uh it was a pretty popular country song. You got to kick a little. And then, yeah. uh, yeah, so that, that was a funny one, but that was one of the ones he kind of had to be there. You know, right, that, right. Uh, the prison ton of them. You got to get Bates telling those Spurrier stories. No, there's no question. He's, he's pretty good at them. But, uh, Eric, we want to uh, really, we really do appreciate you joining the show today. Good luck down there at the Benjamin School. How, by the way, how's your team, uh, if we play football next year? You got a lot of guys coming back. You got a chance to make a run? We we're looking really good. We're really young. We got we got um, the number one quarterback in the country in eighth grade coming in, and uh, you know with we got all four of our receivers are about six three six four. You know our running back is one of the one of the top guys in the area. So you know I think we have a chance. We have some D one linemen. Um, of course, you hear me talking about all offense, but our defense can be pretty <laughs> good too. We have some some good guys on defense. So I think we're going to be all right, but we're definitely going to be very young. I think in, I think in two, three years, you know, cross my fingers, I think we'll be able to play with anybody. Oh, I to, I know the one last thing I want to ask you, you're one of the, I think you and Ernie Mills are the only players that coaches name plays after, you know, blue slide oh, yeah. Cresser, <laughs> Cresser, you know, is the deep yeah, crosser, crosser, out. Cresser. Um, that's got to be a pretty good feeling. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I um, when he was coaching at South Carolina, you know, sometimes they had the mic on him. And you could hear him talking. He would call out the play. It was pretty cool to watch that on TV. But I had one of my quarterbacks, Kevin Anderson, who's playing in CFL right now. He uh, he played for Coach Spurrier in Orlando for the Apollos, and and he called me up one night. At, they were doing offensive install, and he's like, he's like, Coach, do you realize they got a play called Presser? <laughs> like, yeah, I knew that, but he was all excited about it. It was one of one of the guys that I taught how to play QB. But um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. It's a good yep. deal. Eric Cress and Ernie Mills, the only two players that he has na plays named after. Well, Cresser, y'all be safe down there, buddy. Really do appreciate you joining right. the show, and uh, we'll follow your uh, the Benjamin. There's Buccaneers, right? Buccaneers. Yep. Yep. We'll follow y'all this year, and good luck to you, my man. Take care. Sounds good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, Too that's Eric Cresser. You can follow him on Twitter at Eric Cresser. Does a tremendous job training quarterbacks down in South Florida and obviously uh, has some really good players at the Benjamin School. But phew, he was one of the most talented quarterbacks uh, to ever play here. Uh, just never really got a chance because he was playing behind, you know, arguably the, the greatest quarterback we ever had at this school, uh, Danny Werfel. But uh, got to go to Marshall and do his thing and won a national title. Got to play in the NFL a little bit and, and doing wonderful things down there in South Florida. Tomorrow's show, we're going to have two former Gators. We're going to have Bam Hardman, who's coaching at Troy University, and uh, Ed Chester going to join the program, both of them, tomorrow. So uh, make sure you tune in. But that's going to be it for today's show. We want to thank Buddy Martin for joining us and Eric Cresser. Y'all be safe out there, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.